Okay, hi folks, welcome back to another exciting episode of Advanced Higher Physics Past Papers. And as usual, we're going to the Calder Glen High School Advanced Higher Physics webpage. We're going to click on Past Papers there, and we're going to go to Mr Davies' interactive PDF of Past Papers. And when you open that up, then we are going to have a look this time at fields, and in particular, electric fields. And in this video, we're going to have a look at the 2016 paper, Question 13 and 2018, question 13. So have a go at the questions first and then come back when you're ready and we will show you how we have worked through them. So this is a 2016 paper. First thing you see is the data sheet, remember? And in these types of questions, the useful one is probably the permittivity of free space. The symbol for that is E naught or Epsilon naught. It's got a value of 8.85 times 10 to the minus 12 farads per metre. That's the constant that's associated with the electric field. And don't get it mixed up with the one below it. That's the permeability of free space. Or mu naught, it's the constant that's associated with magnetic fields. But more about that in another video. Now let's go to question 13. Q1 is a point charge of plus 12 nanocoulombs. And point Y is 0 0.30 metres from Q1 as shown in figure 13A. We have to show that the electrical potential at point Y is plus 360 volts. Well, in a show question, you should know by now that we need to start with a relationship from the relationship sheet. And the electrical potential relationship is V equals Q over 4 pi E naught R. And then it's just a case of substituting in all the values that we've got in the question. So Q, the point charge, was 12 nanocoulombs. That's 12 times 10 to the minus 9. Divided by 4 pi times the permittivity of free space, which you get on your data sheet. That's 8.85 times 10 to the minus 12. Times the distance from the charge, which was 0 0.3 metres. And if you do that carefully on your calculator... That will give you an answer of plus 360 volts. Now, it's a short question, so I would make sure that my final answer is exactly the same as it was stated in the question. Now, hold on a minute, you might say, I know a shortcut for this equation. Because 1 over 4 pi e naught is equal to 9 times 10 to the 9. That's equal to a constant number as well. And so you might be familiar with seeing the electric field equations with a constant k instead of 1 over 4 pi e naught. Now, will you get away with that in this case? Well, that relationship isn't on your relationship sheet. But if you sub in 9 times 10 to the 9 for that constant times the 12 nanocoulombs and divide it by the 0 0.3 metres, then you get the correct answer, it's 360 volts. But will those lovely markers at the SQE accept that? Because that relationship isn't on the relationship sheet. And they like you starting in a show question with a relationship that's on the relationship sheet. But the best way to find out is to have a look at the official SQE finalised marking instructions. And there they are for this question. And on the left hand side there, we're starting with the full version of the relationship. And on the right hand side, under the additional guidance, um, they are accepting you starting with V equals KQ over R. And as long as you've got all your substitutions correct, and the correct final answer, you'll get 2 out of 2. OK, part B, a second point charge Q2 is placed at a distance of 0 0.4 metres from point Y, as shown in figure 13B. And the electrical potential at point Y is now 0. In part 1, we have to determine the charge of Q2. Well, the electrical potential due to Q2 must be equal and opposite to Q1 if it's 0 at point Y. So, the potential must be negative 360 volts. So, if we sub that in for the electrical potential and use the shortcut of KQ2 over R, and it's Q2 we're looking for, so Q2 will be equal to minus 360 times the distance from Q2 to point Y, which is 0 0.4 metres, and divide by our constant K, in this case, 9 times 10 to the 9. And if you do that on your calculator, you'll get an answer of negative 1.6 times 10 to minus 8 coulombs, or if you prefer, 
minus 16 nanocoulombs. Here's the marking instructions. Standard 3 marker. First mark for identifying that the potential uh, due to Q2 is minus 360 volts. And the second mark is for all the correct substitutions, whether you use the long form of the equation or the shortcut with k equal to 9 times 10 to the 9. And the final mark for the correct answer with the correct unit. Ok, moving on. 13b part 2, determine the electric field strength at point y. Well, straight to your relationship sheet again, electric field strength is equal to Q over 4 pi E naught R squared. Or if you prefer the shortcut, E equals K Q over R squared. And if you're wondering why we've got that shortcut, it's because if you do 1 over 4 pi E naught on your calculator, we sub in for E naught on the data sheet, which is 8.85 times 10 to the minus 12, and you do all that on your calculator, you'll get a value for the constant of 9 times 10 to the 9. Now you won't see that written anywhere on the data sheet, but you can use that shortcut and sub in the 9 times 10 to the 9 and maybe save yourself a little bit of time. So the electric field strength for charge number 1 at point Y, well charge number 1 is 12 nanocoulombs, and it's a positive charge, so the direction of the electric field will be to the right. That's the direction that a positive charge would experience a force. And so therefore, if we work out what that electric field strength is, then it will be E equals KQ over R squared, which is 9 times 10 to the 9 times 12 nanocoulombs, 12 times 10 to the minus 9, over that distance was 0.3 metres. And don't forget to square it, 0 0.3 squared. And if you do that on your calculator, gives you an answer of 1,200 newtons per coulomb to the right. Now let me just rub that constant bit out there and put the direction in. So that's the direction of the electric field. And for Q2, we're going to do the same calculation. So it'll be E equals 9 times 10 to the 9 times the size of the charge, which was 16 nanocoulombs, divided by the distance, which in this case was 0 0.4 squared. Now, Q2 was a negative charge. It was negative 16 nanocoulombs. So the direction of the field here is the direction in which a positive charge would experience a force. So it's also to the right. And if you do that in your calculator, that gives you an answer of 900 newtons per coulomb to the right. So the total electric field strength will be the two of them added together. That gives you 2,100 newtons per coulomb. And don't forget the direction. It's to the right. Let's have a look at the marking instructions. So the first mark for the use of an appropriate relationship. Second mark for your substitutions for Q1. Third mark for Q2. And a final mark for the total electric field strength. That's pretty tricky. Not as tricky as the next bit, though. This is part 3 on figure 13c. Sketch the electric field pattern for this system of charges. Now, the charges are different. That means the pattern will not be symmetrical. Now, it'll be an attractive electric field pattern because the two charges are opposite, but it'll be skewed to one side because one of the charges is bigger than the other one. But the question is, which way will it be skewed? Well, if you think about it, there will be a point where the electric field strength due to both charges will be the same. In other words, KQ1 over R1 squared will be equal to KQ2 over R2 squared. So Q1 over R1 squared will be equal to Q2 over R2 squared. Now let's give ourselves a wee bit of space here. So let's rub these two out and... And rearrange this. So Q2 over Q1 will be equal to R2 squared over R1 squared. Now, that's a 16 to 12 ratio because that's the size of the charges. So that's 4 to 3. So the ratio of R2 to R1 will be 2 to 1.73. Now you don't have to do all this. I'm just doing this to show you that the position around which the electric field pattern will be skewed will be closer to Q1. So I'm going to draw a dotted line there closer to Q1. Let's get rid of all that stuff now. And I'm going to try and draw an electric field pattern 
It's an attractive field pattern that is skewed around that dotted line location there. Now be careful when drawing electric fuel patterns that you don't have any lines crossing over each other because those sneaky markers at the SQA will deduct a mark from you if your lines are crossing over each other. So take care, maybe do it in pencil first so you get a nice neat pattern then go over it in black or blue pen. Now there's a smaller charge on the left hand side so I'm drawing fewer field lines to represent a smaller electric field and more field lines on the right hand side because that is a larger electric charge. And then the last thing that I want to do is I want to put arrows on my diagram. The arrows should always be pointing from positive to negative because that's the direction that a unit positive charge would experience a force. There we go. That's pretty tricky. Would that get two marks? I hope so. Let's look at the marking instructions. And because that is so tricky, they haven't even included the diagram there. It's just one mark for the shape of an attractive field, including the correct direction, and for having the skew in the correct position. A real sting in the tail with that question. Okay, let's have a look at another paper. It's the 2018 paper. And again, we're going to have a look at question 13. So have a go at it first, and then come back, and you'll see how we have done it. So 13a, state what is meant by electric field strength. This is one of these definitions you should just learn off by heart, it is the force per unit positive charge at a point in an electric field. And don't forget to say positive charge because that is the convention for the electric field direction. And in part B, two identical spheres, each with a charge of plus 22 nanocoulombs, are suspended from point P by two equal lengths of light insulating thread. And the spheres repel and come to rest in the position shown in figure 13a. So the spheres are both positively charged, so they are repelling each other due to that repulsive electric force. And the weight of each of the charges is acting vertically downwards. Now if we just look at one of the charges, then there is the electric force and there's the weight of the charge acting vertically downwards. And so what the tension in the string is doing is it is providing a horizontal component of force that balances the electric force and a vertical component of force that balances the weight of the charge. So let's use this little right angle triangle here and we can work out what that electric force is. So let's get rid of all these forces we don't need and then we'll redraw this right angle triangle underneath here. So there's our charge, there's the string, uh, there's the vertical component of the tension. It's a 30 degree angle and the vertical component is equal to the weight and the horizontal component is equal to the electric force. Now, so we know the opposite and the adjacent side of that triangle. So if we use the tan of 30 degrees, that'll be equal to the opposite, which is the electric force, divided by the adjacent side, which is mg. And we're told that the weight of each sphere is 9.80 times 10 to the minus 4 newtons. So let's sub that in and then rearrange it and calculate the electric force. It'll be equal to tan 30 times 9.8 times 10 to the minus 4 and that gives us the answer that we were asked to show. It's 5.66 times 10 to the minus 4 newtons. And remember, in a short question, make sure to write your answer exactly the same as it was given in the question. There's the marking instructions. It's only worth two marks. First mark for identifying it's the weight times tan theta. And the second mark for all the correct substitutions. And not forgetting the final answer as well. Okay, 13b part 2. By considering the electric force between the charges, calculate the distance between the centres of the spheres. So, that electric force was 5.66 times 10 to minus 4 newtons, which we were given in the previous part of the question, and the two charges are 22 nanocoulombs each. That's 22 times 10 to minus 9. And if we want the distance between the charges, then we just need our relationship F equals KQQ over R squared. And again, we're using the shortcut for K here of 9 times 10 to the 9. So let's rearrange the equation. R squared equals 9 times 10 to the 9 times 22 times 10 to the minus 9 squared divided by the force 5.66 times 10 to the minus 4. And if you do that in your calculator and then square root it, you'll get an R, the distance between the charges, 
is 0 0.088 metres. There's the marker instructions, which always show you the full version using the constant of 1 over 4 pi e naught. But the use of the constant 9 times 10 to the 9 is absolutely fine. OK, part 3. Calculate the electrical potential at point P due to both charged spheres. This is worth 5 marks. So let's have a reminder of what the diagram looks like. So I've copied and pasted it in here. Now if you look closely, that is an equilateral triangle. That top angle there is 60 degrees. So the bottom two angles are also equal to 60 degrees and that means that the three sides of that triangle are the same. And we know that the distance between the charges is 0 0.088 metres. So all three sides there are 0 0.088. And if we want to calculate the electrical potential at point P due to both charges, then we just need to work it out for one of them first. So let's write down our relationship for electrical potential. It's V equals KQ over R. That's 9 times 10 to the 9 times 22 nanocoulombs divided by 0 0.088. And because the electrical potential due to the other charge will be exactly the same, then all we have to do is multiply that by 2. Because remember, electrical potential is a scalar. So the effect from both will be the same. And if you do that carefully on your calculator, you'll get an answer of 4.5 times 10 to the 3 volts, 4,500 volts. It's often useful to remember that electric force and field strength are both vectors, whereas electrical potential and potential energy are both scalars. That's pretty tricky. Let's have a look at the marking instructions. So the first mark for an appropriate relationship, the second mark for working out the distance is 0 0.088 metres. Third mark for all your substitutions into the electrical potential relationship. Fourth mark for doubling that electrical potential. And the final mark for the correct answer with the correct unit. Not often you get a five marker, but there you go. So two quite similar questions there involving Coulomb's law and electrical potential and electrical field strength. And there are lots of questions on fields there. Some of them involving magnetic fields or uniform fields or a combination of electric and magnetic fields. So I think we will have another look at fields in the next video. And then we've really only got circuits to do. That's capacitors and inductors. And a little bit about electromagnetic radiation. And we'll try and squeeze one in on graph work and experimental methods. And of course the dreaded uncertainties. Anyway, that's it for this video. We'll see you in the next one.